Welcome. I am so honored you're joining me here today on Reclaim Your Life. I'm Mal Duane. I'm a life recovery coach for women and a transformational guide that helps them reclaim their lives and discover their authentic voice. This is the third season of Reclaim Your Life. And this year we are featuring 18 leading visionaries and heart-centered women whose passion through their work is to serve others and to make the universe a better place. Each guest will share how they've transcended extraordinary challenges, loss, and in some cases trauma to become the women they are today. And today's guest has a very special story. Asia Voigt is an international known animal communicator, an intuitive life guide, teacher, inspirational speaker, radio host, and author. Asia connects with animals on the soul level to help resolve emotional and behavioral issues while assisting in deepening their bond with their human companions. Asia also helps people to reconnect with their own intuition, healing ability, potential, and life's purpose. Throughout her 18-year practice, she has assisted over 70,000 animals and human clients. In her animal communications and intuitive development workshops, Asia generously shares her skills by guiding course participants to uniquely open up to total brilliance in their lives. Her work has been featured on ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox TV, as well as countless radio shows, Coast to Coast, and Hay House. Asia is published in three books, Pearls of Wisdom with Jack Canfield, Miracles Happen with Dr. Brian Weiss, and An Extraordinary You with Vanessa Talbot. From my heart, I am so excited today to talk to you because what you do fascinates me. It is such a beautiful gift. Welcome, Asia. Ah, thank you, Mal. I'm, I'm so excited to be here and really excited to get to know all of your um, other beautiful women and all the women here who are listening and watching today. So you have this amazing, amazing gift. When did you discover that you had this amazing gift? Uh, well, I really do know the answer to that because it was, it was quite the moment. And I was five years old and I was playing outside and I lived across the street from an apartment complex. And so I didn't even really necessarily know the, the names of most of my friends because they were constantly coming and going. And But this particular girl was about eight years old and um, a golden colored dog came bounding over to us. And I was like, hey dog, oh you're cute. And it was very friendly. And it was saying to me, oh my family, they're so noisy. I have to run away from them at least once a day. And so I just repeated that out loud. And my eight-year-old friend said, wait a minute, how do you know that about that dog? Because you're only five and you're not allowed out of your yard. And I live over on that side by that dog's house and they are noisy. I mean, the police are there sometimes. But how did you know that? I said, what are you talking about? The dog is saying it right now. You can't hear the dog? She said, no. And I'm like, that seems impossible to me. And she said, I believe that you are talking to this dog because there's no way you would know that. But no one talks to animals. And you certainly shouldn't tell other people about this because they're going to think you're a little off, maybe a little crazy, and just keep it to yourself, she said. And I thought, talking to the animals is the best part of my day. That I just felt so sad for the world that you're not communicating with the animals. And you weren't startled by this or anything. You just felt it was normal. It was just okay. Oh, yes. It was, it was delightful. And it's not that it was at that point any kind of 
deep, profound discussions. I mean, I my home also was surrounded by a lot of um, Dutch elm trees and, and other nut kind of trees. And so we had a lot of squirrels. And so most of my conversations actually were with the neighborhood squirrels and, you know, just talking about their antics and what they were going to have fun with and how much they were eating. And... Um, Right. I mean, there was another time that I found an injured bird and it was just telling me this is the end of my life and I'm, I'm okay with that and I'm not frightened and if there's any comfort you want to give me, I'll take that. And I was like, oh, certainly. So I felt such a part of the world and it was delightful. I loved it. I, I couldn't imagine that people didn't have that. It was totally normal to me. So how did you use this skill? as you grew up. I know that it became a very important part of your childhood and a way that um, you would survive on pleasantries. That I would survive what? On pleasantries, things you know that upset you or whatever. This, oh. this, this was a comforting tool for you as you grew up. Uh, yes, um, and probably the, the biggest thing that really helped me with, I, I would even go as far as to say saving my life. Mm -hmm. I um, grew up in um, a home where my father sexually abused me. Mm -hmm. There was also um, religious abuse, and they were terrified. My mother was terrified that the devil was waiting around the corner to harm all of us. We better not sin because, you know, it was horrific. So there was all this fear, and I'm going, no. I'm also talking to angels. They love us. There's, there's not an ounce of fear in there. And the trees, they're beautiful, and the stones, and the rocks, and the wind, and the clouds. It's all about connection, Mom. There's, there's no devil in here. I, would you please stop talking like this? Would you please stop with all the fear? And she just couldn't, and my father couldn't stop with his abuse. And I remember a few times thinking, I, I, I was must have maybe a nine years old. Mm. And my father built swimming pools for a living, and he was very good at that. And we, therefore, had a pool in our backyard. And I remember one day going, I'm, I'm done. I, I can't live in this family. I don't feel like I belong at all. They don't believe me. You know, my mother doesn't believe me about the abuse. I'm not safe to talk about it. And I'm, I'm just going to leave, and I'm going to swim under the water, and that's going to be the end of it. And I felt the animals come to me. I felt my spirit guides. I felt the angels going, no, no, you're going to make it through this. There's so much that you're going to be able to do to help other people, to help other animals. You will feel the joy in your heart again. Please don't give up. We're here with you. Oh, you knew that this was more than just talking to animals. This was going to be a life's purpose. This was why you were put on this earth. You discovered this so early on through so much trauma. Yes, yes. And even when you say that, it's like, oh, yeah, the goosebumps yes. Um, yes. of the truth of that. Yeah, amazing. And then, again, a little later in life, it saved you again. I know that you were traveling on the road. You had an accident. I want you to share that because the gifts that we're given in life, they don't come easily. And that's what this program is all about. Each woman that I'll be talking to, like yourself, has had amazing, amazing challenge. And out of that challenge came an extraordinary gift, but it doesn't come easily, and but ultimately it becomes your purpose, and it keeps reappearing and reappearing. And I want you to share that story. I mean, oh my God. <laughs> yes, I, I would really be happy to. And it was now um, just 27 years ago, and the intensity does not leave me. The, the memory does not dim, and it's, it's still so intense and beautiful and amazing. And 
sometimes though, because I feel like my life is so, so beautiful, so incredible. I love the work that I'm doing. And um, I forget, like I just completely forget that that happened to me. And then I might look at my, my body or my hand and I'm like, what's that? What happened to me? And it's like, oh yeah, I, I went through that. So what that is about is, um, so in 1987, I was um, tired of the cold Wisconsin and decided I was going to be a hippie and an artist and get in my van with my animals and head to Florida. Mm -hmm. So um, off I went in my early 20s <clears throat> and was in North Florida and a semi ran into my van. We were on a freeway and it was one of those places where you come, you know, you're going like 55, 60 miles an hour and then you come into a town and there's a stoplight very dangerous and they had had accidents many times at this, this intersection and so we were actually slowing for the red light but there was a semi traveling too fast with stone in the back of his rig and he slammed on his brakes he skidded for like a football field and still ran into us and then jackknifed mm -hmm. so everything started on fire um, around the outside of the van I should say I was not hurt on impact and one of the actual first thoughts after going, oh great, I'm you know in this car accident, was I had just gotten a very beautiful special necklace for Christmas. And it was um, rose quartz with dangling uh, clear quartz crystals hanging from it. And I thought, I've got to get that necklace. And amazingly, in all the, the jumble, there sat that necklace right there on the shelf where I had put it. And I went to reach for it, and I couldn't grab it. My hand was physically stopped, although there wasn't anything there. And again, I kept trying, like, I want that necklace. And then I followed that energy up. And there I could see, now with my eyes, my guardian angel. And my angel said, leave it. Move to the front of the van now. You know, they, <laughs> they're pretty intense. And I was just overwhelmed with a beauty, really androgynous looking. I couldn't quite decide if it was a beautiful man or a kind of a masculine female. Robes of maroons and um, some gray in there and purple and blues. About 13 feet tall. Huge. Oh. Mm. So I listened and I went to the front of the van and there surrounding me were smoke and flames and I tried all of the doors and the windows and nothing would open and there was only a little window or the side window was only open about maybe that much maybe I don't know nine inches <clears throat> and at that time I weighed about 105 pounds and I still didn't think I could fit through there I, I just said to the angel I I, I can't fit. I, I don't know how I'm going to get out. And plus, there is a wall of fire out there. You know what? I, I'm i done. I'm not going to do it. Forget it. I'm scared. And I'm just going to sit here and I'll let the smoke take me over and then I'll pass out and then the fire will burn me up and I'm done. And the angel said, oh no. I'm here to remind you about your power. I'm here to remind you to choose do not choose your fear, but choose your power. I am here to support you, and with that belief, nothing is impossible. And I felt time stop. And I said, okay, I choose my power. I will get out of this van and through the flames, and I will survive this. And the angel said, wonderful, and made that space available so my body fit through the window. I jumped through the flames, uh, was severely burned, and ended up in the intensive care with a 3% chance to live. Oh, I have goosebumps when you tell them. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, my God. 
but the story doesn't end there. It, you have an experience at the hospital. Yes, so I'm in the intensive care unit, and they told my family that I would be paralyzed, and that, again, it was a very slim chance that I would live. And I knew that I was on death's door, and every single moment I would be focusing on my breath. Breathe in. All right, awesome. Hey, I just had another breath. Okay, great, I'm still here. Breathe out. All right, let's do it again. Breathe in. All right, I just got another moment. I'm, I'm here. Wow, this is great. I'm, I'm alive. And um, that consumed hours and days of focus. And then one particular day, there was no more air. No matter how I focused on it, I couldn't get the air to come in. And then I, I was on a uh, machine, a respirator that was helping me breathe. And I could hear the alarm going off and about 10 people rushing in on me and, you know, doing all the dials and everything. And I remember grabbing at them like, give me my oxygen back, help me, and really having this panic, not lasting that long, maybe 30, 45 seconds. And then to the corner, when I had thought, what other options are there. I asked, that was my way of asking for help. And they went, oh, over here's another option. And normally there was another patient with a yellow curtain next to me. And now there was a door. We, you can come through this door and you'll be, you'll be peaceful. So I felt myself lift up and out of my physical body crawled over to the door, which still makes me smile because I still didn't believe that I could walk, even in my spirit body. I didn't believe that I could walk, which wasn't true, right? Crawled over there, went through the door, could stand now, and I looked at my skin that had been so burnt, my hands. Oh, my skin was perfect. And I was standing in a starlit space it was so peaceful and beautiful. People talk about an out-of-body experience, and there's always a similarity of complete peace, <clears throat> light, no struggle. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. But you're presented with a choice. Yes. So in the distance I see three people walking towards me. And I hear telepathically, welcome, greetings. And now I actually had turned off my ability as a teenager to communicate with animals, shockingly, because I started hearing people's thoughts. And in my family, you can guess, they did not say what they meant. Mm -hmm. So I would hear two conversations, the truth, and then what was coming out of their mouth, which didn't match, that's crazy. And I thought, I just can't take it, turn it off. And it did. So it kind of has been maybe about eight years since I could hear telepathically. And so when these people came towards me, it was, oh yeah, that's right. Now I remember. And it taught me, and this is something I can bring back to those who desire to be able to hear their own intuition, their, their spirit guides, their angels, their dogs, their cats, that that gift is inborn within all of us. And yes, mm -hmm. there are some that are more gifted than others, just like gymnastics or playing the piano, but everyone has that within them. And so when I was on the other side and they just sent that message to me, there it was again. I didn't have to quickly go take a class. It was there. It was inside of me. And, um, but I could kind of feel them, you know, working with my energy field to um, kind of give me a little boost. <laughs> and uh, so they called themselves Ascended Masters, which was not a word that I had ever heard before or growing up in uh, a Lutheran home. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, Ascended Masters. And they seemed like university professors to me. Very wise, very kind. We did not hug one another, but really 
uh, respect and honoring. And they said, we can see that you have been living a life of fear. And that is not your soul's path. Your soul's path is to communicate with the animals and help people open their intuition, help them communicate with animals, and therefore it will heal the world. And we would like to advise you to return. And I'm like, return? What? Did you see that body down there? It is a bloody, paralyzed mess. I mean, I, I, I don't even think it's possible. And they kind of smiled like, hmm, here she is again, thinking that there's blocks or there's limits. And there, there isn't. That's just simply not true. You have to choose. You have to have intent, focus, and desire in the direction you want to go and we'll help you. So they um, spent quite a bit of time with me actually going over past lives as a teaching tool to assist me in understanding choices, understanding fear, understanding how when we impact someone, how that there is a ripple effect. And so after I had my lessons and they showed me a little bit more about my future, I decided, okay, I will return. And they said, listen to us, not the doctors when you get back there, and we will help you heal and you will walk and uh, regain all the movement in your arms and your hands and your feet and all those other things. And um, so let's go back. So I'm cr I was crying though. <laughs> and I um, saw then this really large hand come before me and the wind started blowing and the rustling of leaves and I stepped in the hand of the archangel. And later on, mm -hmm. I, I realized it was Metatron, who is one of the largest archangels. And he took me back to my hospital bed, to my physical body, and dropped me in. And I felt like I had fallen into a wetsuit, you know, like a, a scuba suit that mm -hmm. someone had taped, taped shut and dumped water in the side of it and I felt so heavy and soggy and um, pain again filled mm -hmm. my body and then I I woke up and I looked around and I, I saw the doctors were gone and the nurses were gone and I thought, oh, quite a bit of time has passed. Clearly they could see I was stabilized and then took off to help someone else here in the intensive care. And uh, I looked around, I thought, oh, okay, I'm back, and kind of passed out then. So, oh, my God, what an incredible story. Um, yeah, thank you. After all of that, you were still left with some fear. Even though you have this gift and you're being guided by angels and masters, you still have a very deep-rooted fear which inspired a relationship and a connection to a very special animal mm. who took you through your fear. Mm. And I'd love for you to share a little bit about that relationship. And then I, I will, I'd love to have you give a couple of pointers about how, the, how other people can develop that intuition touch upon that gift that you said we all have. It's just a matter of discovering it and working with it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I would love to share. And actually, there are, there are really three animals that okay. really helped me tremendously. And I'm wondering which one you're, Your you're horse. thinking of. Okay, my horse magic. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. That, <laughs> yeah, that's a big one. Um, <sighs> so... Um, I did, um, actually, even after the doctors, let's, let's do a little short story and then we'll get to the mm -hmm. horse. Um, so when I woke back up and I still couldn't move my legs at that point and, and my arms, I had ulnar nerve damage, my elbow joints didn't move and they had a specialist come in and he did all these tests and he said, um, you know, uh, there's like a zero chance percent chance you're going to get your legs working and maybe 10% that your hand will straighten out and move. And I'm like, 
no, that's not what my guides told me. No. And then I could feel them coming in again. Don't get into that panic. Connect with us. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I told the doctor, you can leave because what you're telling me is not my truth. So go ahead. Bye. <laughs> and he's like, you're in denial. No, I'm not. Go goodbye. You can just take all your fancy tools and leave. And um, three weeks later, I started walking. Mm -hmm. Three weeks. Ah, uh, so I'm out of the hospital and um, many, many years go by. I had a, a dog that also assisted me so much. I had another horse that really helped me with uh, fears. And then the big one with uh, my horse, Magic. And I had an angel tell me that I would be getting another horse and that I would have a very intense connection to him, that he would be uh, a young gelding about three months old, and he would be black and white. Okay, and, the, and that I would find him through my, my, my work communicating with, with horses and the animals. So it turned out about two weeks later, a woman called me, and she had a lot of horses uh, at a stable. So I went there, and as I pull up into the driveway, there's this huge statue of a black and white horse. I thought, oh, I'm going to find him here. So I talked to some of her other horses and I said, do you have any black and white three-month-old geldings that are available? She said, I do. And she paraded them in front of me and they were very beautiful and I thought, hmm, no, no, that's, I don't feel an intense connection here. Because one of the tips right here for, for everyone is really feeling in your body, right, like when you said goosebumps, and tingles that our body is a receiver for telepathic and psychic intuitive information. So being in touch with your body and feeling, because some people get the goosebumps, like sometimes I will start yawning when it's a big yes or an angel moves into my energy field. Um, some people, you know, the hair comes up at the back of their neck. Some people, one of my clients gets heartburn feeling, right? So we're starting to pay attention. What is your yes signal? What is that, that connection? So I wasn't having it with any of these beautiful young colts. And I said, hmm, okay. And she said, wait, you're not done. I'm going to take you just, you know, a few blocks away. And um, there's another horse over there you're going to talk to. So I went over there and that's when I saw and she said, oh, when this, there's another little colt here that is mine, but he's living here now. And when I saw him, I had like a lightning bolt go up through my feet. Mm -hmm. And I heard, there's your horse. And that voice came from outside of me up into me. So there's another tip for you because a lot of people get confused. Am I hearing this? Am I making it up inside of me? Or is that really a message coming? So pay attention. Was there an energy that brought it up into you? Then that's coming from an angel or from the animals. And so when I saw this little three-month-old black and white horse, I saw his face. Oh, that's him. That's my baby. Oh. Well, then I, I looked down and I just was like, oh, and my breath caught because his little legs had been burned. He had no fur on them. They were oh. bloody and oozing pus. And I actually had never seen a horse that had been in a fire. Mm. And thank goodness I was actually done talking to her other horse because I thought, oh my gosh, this is my horse, but it is with her. And he was in a fire and now it is bringing back all those unhealed places within me oh. about my fire. And I went, I drove home, it was like a two hour drive and I bawled the entire way. All these flashbacks coming to me and my angel said, call her. She, we're giving her the message. She knows now that he is, belongs with you. And sure enough, I called and she said, it's the first time I heard a message from an angel. He said, that horse, I heard that horse will not be with you long that it belongs with Asia. 
So I adopted him, and um, he was with me for 14 years, and actually he just passed um, about a month ago. And, um, but what, what a gift that, that he mm -hmm. brought to me. We both helped each other heal. You were divinely connected, Asia. Yes. Yes. And I think that happens with animals. I think that we are divinely connected with them. I have felt that about a dog that I have now that, mm. I mean, I, I saw her picture one day and I said, she's going to be my dog. And I didn't even know where she was, and she was in Louisiana. Oh. <laughs> and I had to fly down and go get her. <laughs> so, I, you know, I, it's, it's amazing that how these animals come into our lives. They come in with a purpose sometimes. They're yeah. more than just a fur baby. Yes. Yeah. Oh, this has been so touching because mm. you love animals as much as I do, but the gift that you've been given to work with people and their animals is something so special. And how you acquired that gift and the journey it took to recognize it is so powerful. Mm. Mm. And look at the life you lead today, serving others, helping others to get in touch with their souls, within them, within their animals. It is so beautiful. Mm. You have a free gift for the audience that's listening. Could you tell us a little something about that as we wrap up? Oh, yes, absolutely. And I created this beautiful guided med meditation that I just feel if I can help everyone have to go through all that pain, right? You know, I know that you said, and I do believe and understand, you know, we, there's so many of us who are these wounded healers. And I, I feel that we are moving out of that. You know, the, the, the cutting edge is that you can avoid some of that. You, there's an easier way that you can do that. And so I created this guided meditation to help people glean their gifts that what is your soul's purpose? What is the way that you can start communicating with your own animals? And so it's, um, it's beautiful. I worked really hard on this guided meditation, and I, I feel that your listeners will really, really enjoy it. It sounds wonderful. Thank you again. I'm honored that you spent this time with us. Aww. Bless you, and continue the magnificent work that you're doing. You are making a difference. <laughs> To the oh, thank you. And I do. I love, I really have devoted my life to the animals and helping people. I love it. I'm so excited. And I'm, I'm happy to really share with people and really give them the specifics. You know, if they're feeling blocked or there's a real problem with their animals, really helping them pinpoint on exactly what that is. And um, just one other quick thing, if people mm -hmm. want to find me on Facebook, yes. too, I'm quite Please. active there. And I, I think I'm the only Asia Voight on all of Facebook. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I would love to share what I've learned with everyone. And can you give your web address as well so people can reach out? Um, my website? Mm -hmm. Is that what you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, um, so if you know my first and last name, you can find me. My website is Asia Voight. And that's Asia like the continent and Voight like John Voight, the movie star. And that's spelled A-S-I-A-V-O-I-G-H-T. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you again. Uh, Have a blessed day. Uh, blessings. You Namaste. too. Namaste.